So a factorial ANOVA differs from a traditional one-way ANOVA in that it has more than one independent variable. Importantly, all of these independent variables are still going to be categorical, it's just that there's more than one now. So we test the effects of each one separately, and also we're able to test the combined effects of those independent variables. For more information on that, I suggest taking a look at my video on interactions and understanding how interactions work. But now we're going to talk about how we're actually going to run a factorial ANOVA and how to report it. So, a factorial ANOVA in my current study, I am testing a 2 by 3 between groups design in which I presented people with a situation in which a teacher told parents that their child was acting in gender deviant behavior and gender deviant ways and that the teacher was concerned about the child. The parents then responded to the child according to the randomly assigned conditions in which they either backlashed affirmed or a control condition in which we didn't specify how the parents responded to their child. We also manipulated the gender of the child as being a boy or a girl to examine whether or not that impacted participants responding in terms of parents levels of competence. So again we presented them with this situation the teacher told the parent about their concerns and then the parent responded by backlashing, affirming, or a control condition in which they, we did not specify, and then we measured people's perceptions of parent competence. So now I've opened this in Jamovi. We can see that I have condition as control, affirmation, or backlash condition. We have the gender of the child as male or female, and then I'm also measuring parent competence on a scale of one not at all competent to nine very competent. So we can run a factorial ANOVA just by clicking on ANOVA, ANOVA here, or we can do what I prefer and click on general linear model or linear models here, and we click, we want to make sure that we have this GAMLG add-on. You can see my video on downloading Jamovi and getting it set up, but you can get that from the modules, and once you have this GAMLJ, I actually prefer to run factorial ANOVAs using the general linear model option. So here, I put condition and gender of the child in as fixed factors and parent competence in as my dependent variable. And we can see that automatically this is testing the main effect of condition, the main effect of child gender, and the interaction between condition and the gender of the child. So right over here, we can already see what's happening. So first, we found that there was a significant effect of condition. So we're seeing that the p-value is less than 0 0.001, and it's explaining 57% of the variance. That's what partial eta squared is, is it tells you what percent of variance in your dependent variable is accounted for by your predictor variable. So in this case, we know that there is a significant effect of condition. However, this doesn't tell us which conditions are significantly different from which. And we learned this in the ANOVA video. So if you have questions on this that go beyond this video, I suggest that you check out my one-way ANOVA video. But here, to probe this effect, we're going to run a post hoc test where we're going to ask for two key post hoc comparisons of condition and what this does is those post hoc comparisons pair up the condition they're called pairwise comparisons they pair up those conditions and then it examines whether those two conditions are significantly different so first what we're seeing is that the backlash and control condition are significantly different from one another Further, the affirmation and control condition are also significantly different, and the affirmation condition is significantly different from the backlash condition. So in this case, actually every single one of those comparisons are significantly different from one another. I can actually ask for a plot here. So I can go ahead and put just condition on the horizontal axis, and this can actually show me where each of those means are. So what we're seeing here is that participants are perceiving parents in the affirmation condition as significantly more competent than parents in the control condition who are perceived as significantly more competent 
than parents in the backlash condition. And so that's what's happening here with that conditional variable. Now I also want to examine and test the main effect of gender of the child. And what we're seeing is that there is no main effect of child gender. So if we come down here and instead of asking for condition on that plot, we can actually ask for the gender of the child and we can look at those means. And what we're seeing is that this does look like there's a significant effect, but this is actually too zoomed in. Let's go ahead and ask for the observed scores and y-axis range. And what we're seeing is that when we zoom out, and by the way, Jamovi, that's annoying. It tends to zoom in on the effect and make it look more pronounced than it actually is. In fact, there's almost no difference happening between the male child and the female child, and that's why this difference was not significant. We then also test the interaction between condition and the gender of the child. And what we find is that there is no significant interaction between condition and the gender of the child in this particular study. Now, when we actually want to go forward and report that, we start with just the main effects first. So you're seeing here that I'm saying that there was a significant effect of condition on parent competence, and I'm saying F with two between groups degrees of freedom and 164 within groups degrees of freedom and we can see where I'm getting that from is that we have the de between groups degrees of freedom of two here and we have the residual or error or within groups degrees of freedom is 164 right there. So what we're seeing is that there is a significant effect of condition on parent competence. I'm reporting the F value and the P value and the partial eta squared as 0.57. I then tell my reader that I probed this effect using two key post hoc comparisons, which showed that parents who backlash their child, make sure you give the mean and the standard deviation, were perceived as significantly less competent than parents in the control condition. I give the mean and standard deviation. Now I could give the p-value right here, but I'm gonna save the p-value and you'll see why here in just a second. Who were also perceived as significantly less competent than parents who affirm their child's behavior, and I give the mean and standard deviation. Now, just like I had said, I saved the p-values, and that's because if we go ahead and look back at Jamovi and we look at these post hoc comparisons, every one of those p-values is the same in that they're all less than 0 0.001. And so here I can simplify the reporting by just saying all p's less than 0 0.001. I then go on to say that there was not a significant effect of child gender with one between groups degrees of freedom and 164 residual degrees of freedom. Again, if we jump back to Jamovi, we can see that right here, one between groups degrees of freedom, 164 within groups degrees of freedom, that F value was 2.07, which is what I'm reporting right here. We have F is 2.07, P is equal to 1.152, and eta squared partial is equal to 0.01, so there was not a significant effect of gender or a significant gender by condition interaction where we're seeing that F with two between groups degree to degrees of freedom and 164 within groups degrees of freedom is equal to just 0.35, which is not significant. And the partial eta squared is explaining, this predictor is explaining no percent of variance in the dependent variable of parent competence. So then all we would have to do is just draw a conclusion from these. And you just say, taken together, these findings generally indicate that this is happening. So in this case, it indicates that parents who affirm their child for gender deviant behavior are perceived as the most competent in this case. So now I want to pretend as though the interaction was significant because it is important that you understand that if this interaction is significant, that means that we're going to have to probe that interaction. And so what we do is we actually examine simple effects. So I'm going to put gender of the child as the simple effects variable, and I'm going to put the moderator as condition. It doesn't matter which you use, but I prefer to see things as easy as possible, um, in which case I like to say in the affirmation condition, I like to treat the moderator as the one with three conditions because it makes it a little bit easier. If I switch these, you're gonna see that I would almost have to run Bonferroni or two key post hoc comparisons every time when making those, and that just gets cumbersome, it's annoying. So I put the two level categorical variable as my simple effects variable, and then I can see, does the effect 
of child gender change depending on whether participants were shown the affirmation, backlash, or control condition. And what we're seeing is that there was no man effect, or there was no simple effect of gender of the child in the affirmation condition. There was no simple effect of male-female in the backlash condition, and that there was no simple effect of male-female in the control condition. We can also plot this out just so that you all can see exactly what's happening here. And the reason that there's not an interaction is that the effect of condition does not change depending on whether the child is a male or a female child. What we're seeing is that the difference between the affirmation and control condition here is the same as the difference between the affirmation and control condition here, and that replicates for all of those differences. It doesn't look like the effect of one depends on the level of the other independent variable. Now, if this was a significant interaction, on the other hand, we might see that the slopes of these lines are actually changing and that the affirmation versus backlash versus control difference is going to be more pronounced here than it is here and vice versa. So that's what would happen is if, if we actually had a significant interaction to probe. Well, that's what I have for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there's a particular stat you'd like me to run, please reach out and I'm happy to do so. With that, have a great rest of your day. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Have